welcome back to Late Lock Build. I'm John, and today we're going to go over some of the items that we've been working on this week. So now let's go to cutting and coring in ICF. First thing we're going to go over, let's go over the coring. So coring, and there are the holes that you put in the through the concrete, and this one is for my HVAC system, which is the mini split, the line set, the power, and also the drain line will go pass through that hole. And so this is what the core looks like. And I thought that was really cool. I'm going to hold on to that. So if anybody didn't quite understand how an ICF building works, that is how it works. Up here is where the core is. Here, there we go. And there you can see the core. So everything will pass through there. We'll go on the outside. Let me lean against the railing here. Okay. Turn you around. It will come out the outside up there. Well, there it is right there. Okay, right there. And then I'll cut a channel in my styrofoam. And here's an example of it, because it'll have to pass on the back side of my deck. And when so we'll have all of those pieces turn, come down, and go down because that's where my compressor is, will be down there. And then the ones downstairs will come across and down, come across and down, and so they all connect down there. So now let's go downstairs because what I'm going to show you is ERV um, the for exhaust and intake holes um, and some of the other items. So let's head downstairs. Okay, I'm in my son's room. There's the next hole right there. I'll walk behind here. Same thing. And then over here will be the master bedroom. So let's go in here. Here is the master bedroom. Same hole right there for that unit. And then the next one will be these three holes that you see, besides a big wasp over there. Um, so these holes right here are for, that is ERV intake. ERV exhaust. I had them spread apart so we're not reusing the same air. Next to it is the dryer vent. So I have two of them, they're going out. So I thought, well, I can put those close together. And then down here is where my power wire for my house will come in. And then it'll go up the wall and into my panel. And the reason I had the plastic on the panel there, of course, is because when they core drill, it uses water, sprays it everywhere, and it's why you can see where we've mopped up all the water to get it out of here. So let's go to the next thing, and that will be cutting. And so we'll just start right here. If you can remember uh, from the last few episodes, we missed the height on our layout, and it's no big deal, uh, from our finished floor to our door opening and so what they were able to do is just they get the cutter and they just cut up over and cut it out it was that simple upstairs now i'll show you the front door and the back door where we had to cut the floor no i say the floor the threshold of the concrete wall to make sure that that door fit there so we'll just take a walk with me here Now let's go look at our front door and the rain was the rain we had a heavy rain the other day and it was coming off the roof and it was splashing and it was splashing back in so that's my little diverter in the meantime okay so let's go down here so now you can see the floor so where that's been cut and that's straight across right there and that now sets our door opening let me scoot back Right there. The other one, of course, is the front door. And I had just a little bit of waterproofing in my bucket. So I'm like, ah, eh, front door, you're going to get some waterproofing. Not that it really matters. It's not going to do anything, but I really didn't want to waste it. So now let's go up to the roof and we'll talk about 
the cutting and the coring, not coring, just the cutting on the roof for our flashing and where we had to adjust that very top of that wall. It kind of leaned out a little bit, if you remember from the last pour. Uh, so let's go take a look at that real quick. Okay, I'm up here on the on the on the roof. I had to uh, go get my hat because it is so hot. Probably, I think our heat advisor said 110 today, so it's probably about 105 in the heat index right now. So we'll get down here pretty quick. So let's go over the um, the edge here. I'm gonna turn the camera around and explain to you what we're working on. So we've cut the edge here on the front of the house because it had a little bit of a bow to it because the concrete was pushing on that top form ever so slightly. And you can probably remember that from our last episode when we poured this roof to um, that we came back and like, oh, it's just a little bit out of plumb. So they've cut this, cut this part straight. And then down here, I shave this. There's a little bit left over, but my siding, my flashing is gonna come out here and my siding is three quarters of an inch. So my siding actually has to go even further to go over the top. So I'm not worried about this section because the flashing actually goes on down to down to there. And it'll be the thickness of over the top of the door. And then it'll, so let's go over the flashing part right now. So you see this groove that's cut in here. The flashing will go, will start down in that groove. So it'll come up, over, down, and then have a kick out. And so this part goes down into the groove right here, and then my rubberized waterproofing will actually go over the top of that all the way to this front edge. And so it's almost kind of like a flashing, counter flashing. And the reason this is done is that I just wanna make sure that I don't have any water that might try to go over and maybe get in between here and then get in between the concrete and the styrofoam and make its way down. I'm not quite for sure that it would actually do that, but I'm not taking any chances on it. So this is the way to make sure that we won't have any water on that. Okay, so you notice that we have a black stripe there and we have the black in the doorway. The reason this is done is that I'm going to have wood slats that are going to be vertical here. It's four feet wide there. And I'm going to have it two feet wide over there. Now, the vertical slats are going to be a 1x4, and it's an outdoor product. Uh, I think it's called LP Smart Side. Um, it comes pre-painted, has a, like a 30-year warranty on the paint. Um, I can just, um, I'll put them up there in a vertical fashion. 1x4, I think it's actually 3 quarters of an inch by 3 and a half it's, uh, is the actual dimension of it. But I'm going to have a 3 quarter inch spacing in between each board. And so I needed something in the background to be dark so you have a good shadow line. Now, what that does is that is going to allow that styrofoam behind it to be exposed. And I didn't want the styrofoam over the years to get crumbly or anything like that and start to come out. And I also didn't want a white background. I wanted a black background to give a nice pop to that wood. So what we did was a rubberized waterproofer, which is a thick... It's a, it's a thicker uh, material, and so we put that on first. Let me get in here in the, sh in the shade here because it is hot and it is shiny out. So the first thing we did was we put the rubberized waterproofing on, and then I went back with a black matte latex just to give it a nice smooth finish. Here's the waterproofing, a little bit on the edge that I got over, but you can see that, and then over the top of that, I put the black... Uh, matte paint and so that makes a nice black background for it if you can kind of picture that see how the black behind it really makes the wood pop and so these are of course just the two by fours that I have left over but I think you can get the gist of what I'm going for and so it makes a really nice um, with the black stripes because you have some really good shadow lines so that is what we've been working on